right, good morning everyone. What an incredible turnout for this groundbreaking event. We'd like to start today's festivities with our national anthem and pledge. And we welcome our color guard from the VFW Post, Honor Guard, excuse me, VFW Post 2534, as well as our Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 101. So I would ask those that are able, please stand. Veterans, you may salute the colors and your hat may remain. Thank you to the color guard and, and the kids from the club for, for kicking us off. If we can give them one more round of applause. We are so grateful that each and every one of you could join us this morning to celebrate this long awaited milestone for the Building Futures Together campaign, but more importantly for the kids and the families in our community that, is gonna, that are gonna benefit from this facility. For decades, the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA have provided strength and support to our community and to those individuals that need us most. We're extremely excited about the future and collaborating to build a stronger foundation of health and wellness in our community. No matter anyone's background, we want to provide access to everyone. This facility will be a safe, positive place for all children in our community and will provide the opportunities and experiences our young people need to grow up to be productive, caring, and responsible citizens. Our Boys and Girls Club started out of a trailer in 1994. Today is a celebration of our growth and marks the beginning of endless opportunities to have greater impact on the youth in our community, allowing them to reach their full potential. Now, I'd like to welcome to the stage <clears throat> my partner in crime and someone that you know I feel has put more time and effort than, than most people can imagine to get us where we are today. Brett Salscheider, CEO of the Johnny Alexander Southwood County YMCA, has been an incredible leader to all of us and has been able to keep all of the details organized and on track to get us here today. So please welcome Brett Salscheider, CEO of the YMCA. Uh, Kent is not kidding. I mean, we uh, talk about partners in crime, but we're joined at the hip and uh, seeing this thing through. And so thank you, Kent, and thank you all for being here on this glorious day. And what a glorious day it is. I mean, this is amazing. Um, and I would be remiss if I would say it's, it's, a, it's truly a privilege 
for Kent and myself on such a monumental occasion to be for you representing our respective organizations. Sorry. As we look back at our history, um, our organizations were founded by visionary leaders who had the courage and the foresight to ensure all individuals from all walks of life have access to the life-changing programs that the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club can only provide. As we fast forward to today, that spirit is renewed. That leadership is there. Today not only marks a, mi a major milestone uh, for the project, but for the place that we call home. It's going to be amazing to see how this campus transforms over the next year, year and a half. And it's going to be an amazing project nonetheless. But this project will be, and always will be, far greater than just a building. It's about the importance of relationships. It's about the importance of community. It's about an unyielding belief and faith in ourselves and our future. Sorry, I'm very passionate about what we do. <laughs> and I think I've slapped myself 50 times before I came up here today, so. Um, but to our volunteers, our members, um, our key stakeholders, our donors, we thank and commend you for your resolve and your vision for um, your vision as we embark on this new future together. And with that, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of our organization and all of our staff. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Representative Scott Krug, who would like to say a few words. Thank you. Good morning and what a crowd. This is really exciting to have this many people take time out of your day midweek to come and see what is going to be here because there isn't much here right now. And that's the story that I wanted to tell a little bit today is that, you know, back in the early 70s when this was the, the idea and the concept for the mall and, and people got excited about being here for the mall, the one thing that this project has that the mall concept would never have is that we have a never-ending supply of youth. We have a never-ending supply of enthusiasm. We have a never-ending supply of community partners that want to go in on building something great for our community. So while the, while the concept of one-stop shop has kind of disappeared from Main Street in America, it doesn't mean that uh, we can't do something great with what's left behind. And that's where the state of Wisconsin is happy to come in, uh, being a partner with the WDC to uh, find some uh, funding opportunities to be a partner in this program, to make sure that we're you know, redeveloping and re-energizing the downtown area of Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, that's the exciting part for me uh, at the state levels, to see that our downtowns that once were struggling are now becoming the focus of our redevelopment efforts across the state of Wisconsin. Uh, it, it, these projects don't happen uh, without the collaboration that is in place now that hasn't been necessarily in place before. So to have uh, two dynamic leaders at the top of the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club coming together on this. I cannot say enough about these two guys. They've done an amazing job. And I want to give them one more round of applause. <laughs> Kent and Brent have a, uh, a big legacy to live up to getting this project done and getting it off the ground. And I, I, I expect amazing things from these guys. So I'm excited to be a part of this project in any way that we can to help out. So, you know, to kind of wrap up my comments, I want to make sure that everybody understands that, you know, we have a great opportunity here. We have an opportunity to, uh, to rise up out of the ashes. And, and it's kind of the story of Wisconsin Rapids, and I'll leave me to the rest of my remarks here, is the, the story of Wisconsin Rapids is kind of built into this project and several others that are going on. It's time for a rebirth. It's time for growth. It's time for uh, new and exciting ventures that we can all be a part of and to come out of our silos and all work together and to continue to working on big projects. Uh, so with that, I want to introduce another dynamic leader who can uh, tell you a lot about what the city is up to these days. And I want to thank him as well for being a great partner over the last few years on getting some of these big things going that we're talking about here in the Wisconsin Rapids area. Uh, so I'm going to conclude my remarks by thanking you for being here. I want to introduce Mayor Zach Verwin. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a significant occasion to be gathered here with all of you on what feels like and has been mentioned a very surreal day. And I see so many folks in the audience that had such an important part and role to play 
and being here. So thank you all for your contributions. Uh, it goes without saying, massive community projects uh, like this uh, aren't easy, uh, nor are redevelopments. Some take years and some take decades. And I think it bears repeating that in our minds as we think about these really challenging projects, and this is no exception that we're standing here today to celebrate. I'd like to leave you uh, with four elements this morning uh, in my remarks, history, opportunity, courage, and impact. Uh, I often think of our fine uh, city in terms of its historical perspective, and Phil will appreciate that, our city historian here. Uh, it helps me maintain a long view and a long view uh, necessary to promote sustainable growth in this city, central to my objectives. A century ago, this property, informally the city of Centralia, uh, was once a bustling rail switching yard which brought passenger rail and passengers and freight to and from this site for nearly 50 years. 40 years ago this month, the 17th day of this month to be exact, uh, this mall opened and, uh, and 40, for 40 years uh, brought people to this community in search of retail opportunities. What a difference time makes and what a difference it makes in terms of the opportunities that come and go. In terms of opportunities, uh, we knew the decline of our mall was imminent and uh, through complex uh, ownership structures and a reluctance to do the necessary, prepared us begrudgingly for its demise. Saving our mall in its current form and model was a non-starter. This takes me to my first acknowledgement, the community supporters who too saw the writing on the wall with the declining mall and weren't shy uh, or quiet about encouraging city and organizational leaders to consider this site over the appearance of a, similar, a simpler Greenfield site. This validation of what many were already thinking moved this to a thorough feasibility analysis. Through thorough analysis, it brought to light many opportunities that weren't initially apparent. Pursuing the opportunity with the known realities is no easy task. Seizing a downtown site in addition to a presently occupied site takes a noteworthy amount of courage, my third point. That known faster quanti quantity of a uh, greenfield site seemed, seemed much easier. Today's occasion took the courage of the many donors, board and steering committee members, and donors who considered the vision and reached, really reached, uh, when they saw their missions and purpose align with this opportunity. No matter how much sense it made in the minds of community organizational leaders, however, it was the more difficult, costly option. However, with more, with now what uh, many more believe, has the greatest opportunity for impact. In my final point, situated near our city's northwest side, and in the historical district, uh, downtown district of our riverfront, the ideal location uh, is for creating traffic and, uh, and the activity necessary to inspire additional investment and business opportunities in pursuit of true growth in this area. Small business and community members have proven. Uh, success is possible on the down, in the downtown Riverfront District or on the city's west side, and I'm pleased they'll be joined by two outstanding organizations. Over the next 18 months, contractors will reshape and impact the appearance of this neighborhood, and over the longer term, youth, families, seniors, and veterans will come to a central place, our downtown waterfront district, and, and become healthier in its many forms. These two organizations will be healthier and stronger now that they are collaborating and sharing resources, both for community impact. On youth alone, they will collectively serve over 1,600 youth under the age of 18. However, to meet the measure of successful impact, they will work to ensure that families and programs and the facilities accessible and welcoming to all children, families, and seniors. The impact and critical mass from co-location and collaboration between the many anchors around this campus has a potential to bring about many new community programs and redevelopment of vacant or underutilized property. We've long known our central place, the downtown Riverfront District's potential, but what stands before us is the challenge of interconnectedness and greater cohesion. Tremendous assets can be enhanced by supporting and planning together. More worthy projects also stand ready to be realized in the downtown Waterfront District. And while we may be fatigued today at the, at the formation of this occasion, We've got more to do, and, and more to do to ensure that this project is successful in its long-term long perspectives. As I reflect on this journey, journey personally, I recall Brett taking his position shortly after I did here in the city a little over six years ago, and my prior to taking office, making my livelihood in one of those small businesses down the street. 
It's safe to say neither of us expected to be here six and a half years later. And along uh, this journey of many twists and turns, we've emerged stronger, more collaborative, and more intentional about meeting the needs of the entire community. After all, it proves what's worth fighting for and what's worth having is worth fighting for. Thank you all for your contributions, big and small. Congratulations on this historic occasion for having the courage to pursue the opportunity to impact this community for a generation to come. Welcome to the neighborhood. It's now my pleasure to introduce one of those investors who played an important role in this unique project, Chris Laurent, Senior Vice President of Sener, uh, President of Sener Solu uh, Solutions. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, my name is Chris Laurent. I work for a company called Sener. We're a Michigan-based company, and we do work in the upper Midwest and mid-Atlantic states. Um, I, I was reminded when I came here, I used to work for WIDA, Wisconsin Housing Economic Development Authority, and our executive director, who's since passed again, named Fritz Roof, every time he'd go to one of these events, he talked about how he was, how he was born in the community. And I thought, man, like I've been to like 20 of these things. He couldn't have possibly been born in Green Bay and, and, and Oconomowoc. Um, I will tell you, though, that I'm joined uh, today by Chris Gillings, one of my colleagues. Chris, you want to raise your hand? I don't know where you went. Um, Chris actually grew up in Wisconsin Rapids. So it, it's, it's a delight for us to be here today. I, I came from Madison this morning. Um, I work for a, a company that's a community development financial institution, or CDFI. And, and what we do is we get money that's directed by Congress through the, the Department of Treasury, and we get to choose projects that we invest in toward that end. Um, money's always been there, um, and, and Dave Obi, I think, was this Obi's district or not? Um, he was a master at, at this thing called an earmark where they'd have this bill and somehow they'd attach you know, several million dollars to it that they'd fund developments. Um, through the course of tax reform and some other changes, they've, they've tried to formalize that process. And so we get something called a new market tax credit, which has more jurisdiction and oversight. Um, but we're very particular about how we invest and why. Um, and, and I think that one of the things that's really notable about our work is that success breeds success. And we will work and invest in communities that believe in themselves. I can't tell you how many communities we go into where there's a muddled message and there's sort of commitment, but not really. But it, it starts with leadership. It starts with the mayor and it starts with a good solid council that says we're going to be different than we were yesterday. and We can't rest on the laurels of the paper industry. We've got to be something else tomorrow. And, and even though I'm a city guy, I believe in cities like Madison and Milwaukee, I, I also believe in the transformation that I'm seeing right now for more people to work at home through the advent of technology. And people who want a quality lifestyle are choosing to live in communities like Wisconsin Rapids. So um, part of our strategy is not doing one-off investments in communities, but um, we're now in the process right now, even though we got our start in housing, we're undertaking our fourth investment in your community through the low-income housing tax credit program. And I think uh, fundamentally about you know, why we do what we do, uh, there, there's no better message about what a healthy community is than really focusing on the youth. Um, taking care and removing those barriers that economic conditions may have to the same uh, successes that we, uh, more privileged folks, have better access to um, gives them such a, a stronger start in life. So um, we're, it's an honor for us to be part of today. Um, I'd like to introduce Rick Nevers, Senior Vice President for Aspirus. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Nevers, Senior Vice President of Regional Operations for Aspirus, and I am honored to represent Aspirus at this auspicious occasion. Today is a big day for this community, and we are proud to be a part of this innovative and collaborative project. It has required the hard work and coordination of many partners, and today we will see those efforts begin to come to fruition. We believe in the importance of reaching outside our own walls so that we can partner with other community stakeholders. We invested in this innovative project in partnership because we understand the entire community needs to be engaged if we want to improve health. 
The collaboration between the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club will create a health and wellness destination unlike any other, one that is welcoming and safe for all members of the community. Our mission calls on us to heal people, promote health, and strengthen communities. Our investment in the new Southwood YMCA and Boys and Girls Club of Wisconsin Rapids campus help us fulfill our mission. We are building futures together. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Leslie Art. Good morning. On behalf of the Alexander Charitable Foundation, I'm so excited to be here today on this momentous day for both the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club. Investment in youth has been a priority of the Alexander family for more than a century. That priority coalesced in the early part of the 20th century in a boys club that was then formed on the newly created Nepco Lake. Years after, many years after, the scope of that investment broadened into a community center that became the John E. Alexander Southwood County YMCA Community Center. My grandfather saw in the community hardworking, good people, needing and deserving a facility that would meet their aspirations, drives, and values. It's hard to believe that almost 60 years ago to the day, on September 21st, 1958, John E. Alexander Southwood County YMC Community Center was dedicated in Port Edwards. I'd like to share a few words from my grandfather's dedication speech that, ring, that rings so true still today. Quote, my experience has taught me two things. To really do a job, job in community improvement, you have to live it body and soul. You can't give half your mind to the talk. The other thing is this, to be successful, any community program must reach all the people, all the denominations and ages, and must off offer something worthwhile to all groups, regardless of position, wealth, or social level. These feelings have guided my efforts and those of many others who have devoted their untiring efforts in making a community center a reality." End quote. The Alexander and Charitable Foundation is very pleased that John Alexander's vision continues with the shared facility with the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to introduce Phil Brown and Kurt Hoyer, campaign co-chairs. Wow, we made it. We are here today. Uh, this has been phenomenal. And before I get into uh, some of my formal speeches, uh, I, I want to say it's just been an honor being a co-chair of this campaign. I was there at the very beginning of the Boys and Girls Club when we, uh, uh, many people got together and started the club back in the early 90s. And uh, we saw good, steady growth over the past 25 years. But before I get into my formal notes, I look around and I see so many people that made this effort possible. But I also spotted a young man over here with the Boys and Girls Club who was a member of the Boys and Girls Club when he was probably in second or third grade. And that is Zach King over here in the blue. So Zach, I'm so glad you're here today. We have been part of 25 years of tremendous growth growth for the club, and uh, I'm so glad you're here today. So let's hear it for Zach. Look at this long term memory. But not only being there at the beginning of the Boys and Girls Club effort, uh, it's just been an honor to be co chair with Kurt Hoyer, a self proclaimed Y rat born and raised in the Port Edwards area. So Kurt has spent many formative years and uh, development at the YMCA. It's just been tremendous. So, uh, uh, but anyway, we are honored to be the co-chairs of this collaborative effort that is aimed at improving the health and well-being of children, adults, and seniors here in the Southwood County area. We all know that it takes a village to raise a child, and in this case, it has taken a village to take this project from the infancy stage to where we are today and where we will be in the future to make this project as a sustainable reality. 
It has never been more necessary than it is today in our community to have the support of partners and volunteers to ensure the success of this project. And so many people stepped up and made this project a reality. We can't thank you enough. Our campaign has been blessed by the generosity of our community with every single gift that has been made. We would like to thank each person, family, and organization that has made a donation. It's all a collaborative effort, major collaborative effort. And many stepped up to make the call, but a few key donors really took the first step in making this project a reality. And we would like to recognize them. And uh, of course, the Legacy Foundation uh, was one of our leaders uh, in uh, a major lead gift to start off the campaign. And we can't thank Legacy enough for everything you did to help get it off the table. Greg Medeshine, Mike Bovey, we can't thank you all enough, and the Board of Directors for the Legacy Foundation. Uh, the Bell Family Charitable Foundation came up with a very substantial early gift. Steve Bell, Paula, uh, Becky, everybody associated with the Bell Family Foundation deserves a lot of credit for really making it happen. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And uh, the Godchalk family uh, really stepped up and saw the need for a sustainable endowment for the Boys and Girls Club sustainable for the future success of the Boys and Girls Club. So once again, we can't thank Fawn, Andy, Guy, and Kathy Godchalk for that generous gift to that endowment fund. That is very forward thinking. Very forward thinking. And our friends at Aspirus, unbelievable the partnership that you have allowed us to accomplish today. We can't thank you enough. It's a partnership that is going to be very, very solid for many, many years to come. So Aspirus, thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, it will be the John E. Alexander y Southwood County YMCA. And once again, the Alexander's family, after 60 years in Port Edwards, are the lead, uh, one of the lead gifts to make this a reality here in Wisconsin Rapids. So once again, on behalf of all of us, thank you very much to the Alexander Foundation. And thank you much. And at, and at this point, I want to turn it over to my co-chair. Kurt and I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed being co-chairs of this event, and we've become better and better friends because of, because of it. So, uh, Kurt, here you go. Well, thank you, Phil, and thank you, everyone, for being here. It's been an honor to co-chair with Phil. Um, it's been an honor to be a part of such a great um, initiative that's going to just be long-lasting for years and years to come in this community. I'm going to go off script just a little bit to start because I want to make sure that we thank Brett, Kent, Raquel, Sam, and all of your staffs for all that you have done. Not only has it been 40-plus hours a week, taking care of program, programming at the Y and the Boys and Girls Club, it's been this campaign on top of it. And you guys have been incredible. And the next I want to say thank you to all those that have been involved with the Boys and Girls and the YMCA over the many years. Whether you've been a volunteer, a donor, whether you've worked in either one of those facilities changing lives, um, my timing's not really good because my mom and dad had to leave for another engagement, but my mom was at the YMCA running Wise Kids, Wise Kids, for many, many, many years and touched so many lives. And as Phil said, I'm the self-proclaimed Y rat, but I'm one of many. But just so appreciate the people that poured their hearts and souls into those organizations, changing lives, changing lives. So thank you to all, thank you to all. So to meet the challenges of today and future generations, we know a new facility is needed. We are thankful to everyone who has been involved in this process to create a new facility for our community. Our volunteers, our board members, the steering committee, but the Boys and Girls uh, Club Board of Directors as well as the YMCA, the campaign steering committee, 
staff from both organizations, and our key partners, as Phil had alluded to. With, the, with their combined efforts, we are making, or we, excuse me, we are meeting the needs of today with an end result in which both organizations are able to significantly increase the number of people served. And to add to that unique opportunity, we also are partnering with our VA. This new center will be a platform and vehicle to ensure that Southwood County remains a community that is accessible and welcoming to all children, families, and seniors that will improve the overall health and quality of life for our residents. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Steve Tank, Vice President of Business Innovation, um, and just give a really big time shout out um, to Myron and the crew for everything that they have done, especially to make this day possible, but moving forward. As I chatted with Raquel, more has happened in the last 15 days to make this happen, and I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you, Steve, and your team. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a day! Woo! This is amazing! Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kurt. And on behalf of the entire Myron team, we are so excited about today. In fact, our head cheerleader is with us today. Some of you know him. I love the man, our CEO of Myron Construction, Dave Voss. Dave, thank you for being with us. If there's one guy that's going to make sure this gets done right, he's standing right there. Uh, we're honored and we're really grateful. And we know that this is such a special project because we've been at this for four years together. Mayor, your leadership and the leadership of the entire community has been amazing. And this will not be an average YMCA. This will not be an average Boys and Girls Club. Why? Because we know that these people deliver on change. We know that this community is centered around helping all of us and helping people. We know that they bring people together for the positive spirit that happens every single day in this incredible world-class community. And we know that they nurture the potential of the possibilities that are within every single one of us. I've been lucky enough to be a Y member for 35 years and the Y was a surrogate uh, mother to my kids, right? The Y raises our kids in many ways and swim lessons and all the great things that happen. So at my room, we feel blessed. We feel blessed for the opportunity to partner once again. We've been lucky to partner with Aspirus at Riverview Hospital and other projects. And care has been taken to use local subcontractors. So when we start, you will see 200 people, your neighbors, your friends, the people that you work together every single day that are members of the Y and the, or past members of the Boys and Girls Club. You're working on this incredible project. In fact, our superintendent, Gerald, put your hand up. Gerald lives in Vesper which is 10, mile, 10 miles away, Gerald, right around the corner. Yeah, Gerald, that's the guy that's going to make this happen. And Gerald was telling us a few stories how he used to ride his bike from Vesper into the mall when he was 13 and harassed all of you. So now you have your chance to get back at the guy right here. So we know this is going to be a world-class YMCA. And soon, in fact, on September 10th, you will see the team starting to mobilize. The work will begin. And we know that this is going to be un unlike any other YMCA, not only in the state of Wisconsin, but anywhere in the Midwest, right? Right, Brett? Where's Brett? Has anybody seen Brett? <laughs> what happened to Brett? So we need everybody to stand up. If you can move over this way, right? If move between us and the crane. We're going to try to find Brett. <laughs> We want to see Brett. Brett's here someplace. He's nearby. Everybody, did anybody see Brett? Brett, where are you, Brett? Hey.
again for everybody coming today. We appreciate that. At this time, we welcome you to stay and watch as we place the rendering in front of the sand over here, and we'll do some shovel turning. We also invite you to enjoy some refreshments towards the back of the tent. And at this time, as we watch the rendering come down, we'd like to invite our first photo ops up, and that's gonna include anybody that was speaking today. We'd like you to be part of the shovel turning as well as the Alexander Foundation. Those of you that are here representing them, Aspirus, the Bell Charitable Foundation. Come on, closer to the sand. Come on up, close. Everybody make room for somebody else. Ready? Three, grab a shovel, grab a shovel. Yep. Three, two, one, go! We have the original shovel from 1957. Original groundbreaking is with us, so we got to use that one up front. 57. All right. Are we ready to grab some sand? Three, two, one, shovel! Woo! 